Okay, now we proceed with the theoretical plate model of chromatography. Okay, the plate model supposes that the chromatographic column is contains a large number of separate layer called a theoretical plate. And it is given or nominated by the symbol N. Okay. It is actually an index that indicates the column efficiency and it describes the number of plates as defined according to plate theory and can be used to determine column efficiency based on calculation in which the larger the theoretical plate number, the sharper the peaks. So, the separate equilibrations of the sample between the stationary and mobile face occur in these plates. The end light move down the column by transfer of equilibrated mobile face from one plate to the next plate. Okay, this is the theory of the theoretical plate. So, uh, inside the column, uh, it has a several theoretical plate, which is uh, amount is in a thousand, okay? Thousand of theoretical plates inside the column. So, to obtain separation, sharp symmetrical chromatographic peak must be obtained. This means that band broadening must be limited. It is also beneficial to measure the efficiency of the column. Two related terms are widely used as quantitative measures of chromatographic column efficiency, okay, which are the plate height, which is H, and the number of plate, which is N. So these uh, two related are given by the equation N equal to L over H. So N is the column efficiency and L is the length usually in centimeters of the column packing and H is the plate height. And the efficiency of chromatogram column can uh, be increased by increasing the number of plates and uh, reducing the plate height. So the higher the number of N theoretical plate, which is N, so means that the number of sharper, uh, um, the higher the theoretical plate N, the sharper the peak is, which is good. Separation is good. Okay, number of plate given by N is, uh, the more the plates, the better. Okay, high of N value, better separation. And plate high, H, the smaller is the better. Okay. Okay, the number of theoretical plates that a real column possesses can be found by examining a chromatographic peak after illusion. So, N uh, is given by 16 TR over width, uh, power of 2. So, whereby the W half is the peak width at half height. So we rarely use uh, this equation, we seldom use it, basically we use this equation, okay, mostly, n equal to L over H, depends on the question, alright, so um, basically we use, uh, we don't use this equation, okay. As can be seen from this equation, column behave as if they have different numbers of plates. Or different solutes in a mixture. Okay, proceed with the column resolution RS. Okay, all the calculation can do or you can uh, use the equation given. So the column resolution RS of a column, it provides a quantitative measure of its ability to separate two analytes. And the resolution of two species A and B is defined as 2 TRB minus TRA, which is you need to know what is the retention time of species B minus by retention time of species A divided by the width of A and width of B. Okay. Baseline resolution is achieved when R equal to 1.5. The location of the Resolution. Okay, let me draw first. Okay, let's see if you have to compound. And the peak is here. One peak 
and the second pick is here and this one is the retention time for compound A so intro TR A okay, TR A and the second one is the retention time for compound B this is the compound B TR TRB Okay, so the resolution value is uh, starting from here. Okay, to here. Okay, resolution, the value of uh, resolution is depends on the retention factor. Okay, K prime. So, uh, retention factor has a big impact on the resolution. Okay, we can see that. For this graph, it uh, shows the high resolution value uh, since the difference between the retention factor of A and B is high. Okay, for the second graph, we consider it uh, it has a moderate resolution since uh, the gap or the value between TR and TA is uh, quite uh, quite high, uh, quite uh, dekat, dekat sangat, eh? not far, okay? not far between each other and the last one is the lowest resolution between compound a and b because uh dia ada petin di kat sini okay overlap kat sini and ni overlap juga tapi tak sebanyak yang ni okay sorry kalau saya lukis tak pandai lukis sangat so um the retention factor uh, mainkan peranan penting lah has a big impact on the resolution value Okay, basically low capacity factor will produce low resolution and the best value for the capacity factors lies between 1 to 5. Right. It is useful to relate the resolution to the number of plates in the column which is the selectivity factor and the retention factor of the two solutes given by the, this formula. And from this equation, it is known that to obtain high resolution, the three term must be maximized which is an increase in, in N, the number of theoretical plate, reduce the number of column height, and reducing the size of the stationary phase particles. Okay, apart from improving the column resolution, RS, to improve the separation, it is often found that by controlling the capacity factor, separation can be greatly improved. Okay, so... This can be achieved by changing the temperature, for example, in gas chromatography, or otherwise, you can change the composition of the mobile phase in HPLC or high liquid chromatography. While for the selectivity factor, we can also be manipulated the uh, RS um, to improve the separation. Okay, we can also manipulate the selectivity uh, factor to, in, to improve the resolution. In these cases, capacity factor is optimized first and then um, the selectivity factor is increased by one of the following procedure, which are by changing the mobile phase composition, changing column temperature, changing the composition of stationary phase, and last one, by using special chemical effects such as an incorporating a species which complex with one of the solutes into the stationary phase. Okay, look at the column temperature. The retention time of a compound depends not only on the types of stationary phase, but also the column temperature. As in uh, gas chromatography, we use a temperature, a uh, different temperature to measure the uh, effectiveness of the separation. So in general, you can analyze your sample under isothermal condition um, with respect to the uh, temperature whereby when, what happened when we increase the temperature what happened to the separation so in which the temperature of the column remains constant throughout the analysis okay for isothermal uh, we use the remaining or we use the same temperature from beginning until the end of the uh, chromatogram until the end of the chromatography measurement 
So as the temperature increases, compound move through the column faster and consequently the retention time decreases. So it is good uh, if you can uh, get the retention, get the uh, separation result in a short time. It means that the TR value will decrease. Thus, we can potentially reduce the analysis time by increasing the column temperature. However, we need to allow sufficient time for the compound to interact with the stationery to provide the required separation of sample component. Okay, for example, this is the result for GC analysis. Okay, we can see that uh, in the simplest GC analysis, the column is maintained at a constant temperature. So, if the, the temperature is maintained from the beginning until the end of the separation, we call it as the isothermal analysis. Okay, same temperature uh, program used. And the chromatogram in this figure shows the separation of a mixture of normal alkene. Okay, C10, C11, C12, C13, C14, and C15, uh, ranging from C6 to C21. Using isothermal condition at 150 degrees C. And the low molecular weight alkane, which is less than C carbon number 10, elute very quickly and are not resolved. So we can see that this peak here is elute very quickly and we cannot determine the compound here correctly. So the higher molecular weight component, which is more than carbon 16, do not elute from the column at this temperature. Okay, after C15, it um, cannot display any peak. And at this temperature, C14 and C15 are quietly brought a symmetrical peak. Okay. When we use a temperature program, which is uh, we increase the temperature um, time by time, uh, we can see that the column temperature is increased from 50 to 250 degrees C. So we can see that the peak below carbon number 10 is appeared correctly and nicely and the peak after carbon 15 it appeared until the carbon 21 so all the alkane components are completely separated into narrow symmetrical peak so we can um, figure out what is the retention time for carbon 20 what is the retention time for carbon 8 so each carbon 8 um, you can um, categorize it what type of carbon number eight is that okay depends on the peak and the area below the peak is the amount of the carbon or the compound detected comparing the separation of the same mixture with the lower chromatogram which is temperature program at eight degree per minute by comparing these two figure we can assume that the separation efficiency is much greater in uh, in b using temperature program higher molecular weight component longer chain hydrocarbon that being eluted in a conclusion it can be said that the longer the compound is in the column so the broader the peaks become okay so we can see that here the retention time if we increase the temperature the retention time is decreased to 30, uh, 36 compared to um, use uh, to the more condition which is at 150 it take about 95 degree 95 deg uh, minutes to elute okay. this peak become quite broad and present some integration difficulties as they become broader okay that's all for lecture on migration rate so i will uh, continue with our exercise so that you can get familiar with uh, the situation or the question that we came up Thank you.